Hello, today I would like to show you how we can interact with a tactical slash industrial rugged Android tablet and the Moto Turbo Radio. I'm going to show you radio that are working and radio that is not working. And I'm going to show you both connection options that one is uh, via USB and the second is via Bluetooth. And we are going to explore that just very important part of warning that this is not part of the amateur radio and you cannot use that inside of the amateur radio band this is, is only for the commercial license frequencies and let's let's take a look first radio that is not working this is the old first generation Moto Turbo DP3600 and this radio does not work. I believe that's because of the network card inside of the radio. They, they do not have just a driver for the Android. And we are connected via the programming cable. I've got this weird angle because of the glare. I found that this is the best what we can do. I very enjoy that tablet because if you have a full size USB and we can plug it and it's not going to happen anything and that's because the driver is not supported let me open the settings and here we've got the Ethernet and as you can see it's on but if we open this nothing it's not detected, it's connected, everything is happy, but this is not working. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off and we are going to take a look at something that actually work. And by the way, we are going to use the same cable. This is the Motorola DP4800. And the whole series is going to work. Cable is exactly the same. This is not a problem with with a cable by the I believe by the network card that do not have a drivers. This is just a straight one to one cable with some kind of a ferrite bead, I believe, for the RF blocking. And we are booting up our radio. We are going to connect and as you can see it's showing up over here and we are waiting for the to get the IP address and if we do not get this I'm not sure if the radio is booted up I'm going to plug it out and in and after seconds we should get the IP address whoops not here and as you can see we've got the all the data from the DHCP all the configuration is done here we've got the Ethernet icon we can open a ping applications and we can ping other radio so let's do that going to use the address of of the air interface sorry not that what I want 12 that's the IP address of the radio network I'm going to move it slightly here so you can observe the both radio and the tablet screen let's hide that and we are sending packages and observe here we're going to see that we've got our message going out we've got the file transfer icon and as you can see we've got a pink address so this radio works perfect of course if I if I switch the channel we are going to lost our connection as you can see so everything is working like it's supposed to and okay we are off we are going to put this radio away and we are going to try something different. Here is a DP3600 
2400E. The whole series is working great. They are using different cable, but as I told you, the cable is not that important. The magic is inside the radio. So we are doing exactly the same. We are powering our radio on. And I'm going to just plug it in, maybe give it a second to boot up because the radio is acting as a router that is routing packages from the USB to the air interface. And radios have actually a free interface. There is a, the air interface, there is a Bluetooth interface and the USB interface. Okay, I'm going to plug it in, of course. Okay, and in second it should show us the Ethernet icon. Or it don't want. Let's ask it why. Because it should work. Okay, plug it back. We should get an icon. Yes, we've got everything is perfect. Let's ping. Exactly the same radio. I do not have it. 14. No, 12. Okay, I'm pinging radio, and you can see that we've got the communications going on, and we've got our packets flying through. And everything is working perfect. Of course, if I unplug, there is no magic. Everything is going through the radio. So and the last option that we've got is connecting wirelessly via Bluetooth. And here I've got the DP3441E, a newer radio. We can, of course, use the side port, but here we are going to use a Bluetooth. I'm already pair. But I'm going to put my radio in the discovery mode. I program this button and we've got a red lamp, red LED. I'm going to the Bluetooth settings. I'm going to make sure it's on. And I've got my power device and I'm going to hit connect it. Actually, I'm going to go here and use as the internet access. We're going to hear a little bit a beep, 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 beep. And we are connected. And now all the traffic is going through this radio. I can disable the discover mode, just like that. We are going to open our ping applications and do exactly the same, 12, just like that, and hit a ping. And as you can see, there is a traffic going via this radio and everything is done wirelessly. You might ask yourself why this is a good option. This is a very good option because you can, if you are deployed in the field, you can actually put uh, this radio on a tree, just tie a rope and elevate it and in the line of sight Let's give a big improvement. And of course you can say that uh, that's not a correct way because the radio, handheld radio is, you are a part of the antenna, so that's not a proper way. You are the one of the element. But in case of UHF that we are here, it's not that really that, that dependent on the Lower frequency, that's absolutely 100 true, but for the UHF you can get away with this. So that's how it looks like. I hope you find that interesting. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time and bye bye.